I hate that depressing realization you get when you finish a TV series and then you have to find new purpose in life. Like you'll just be sitting there like, what am I supposed to do now? My sleep schedule gets so jacked up whenever I find a new TV show. Like all day I'm tired and then as soon as it's time to go to sleep, I'm wide awake. But I'm gonna tell y'all what makes me tired no matter what. Reading. True story, not exaggerating. Basically, what happens is whenever I find a new TV show and then I go to try to read something, it does not go well. I can't say reading makes me sleepy because I could sit on Facebook and Twitter all day long and not get sleepy, which made me realize it's books. I'll be at Cold Stone putting all this vanilla Oreo deliciousness all up in my mouth, like size, holla at me because I'm on a diet but not really because I do whatever I want. And every time I look next door and see somebody sitting outside Starbucks reading, I get so jello. Like sometimes it just amazes me. I'll just sit and stare at them like I'm on a safari looking at a rare animal like, oh my god, look at them. They're actually turning the pages. I seriously think there's a factory somewhere where they just spray every single book with chloroform because every time I sit down to read something, it's just like blah blah And then I wake up like two days later If anyone ever wants to kidnap me and sell me on the black market in Bangkok Basically, all they'd have to do is walk up on me and be like, hey, can you do me a favor and just read this out loud? And I'd be like, yeah, Harry Potter by J.K. Rock True story, not exaggerating, but you know what else I noticed? I procrastinate a lot more whenever I find a new TV show. I just can't pull myself away like my puppy will be looking at me like whoa, whoa, whoa. and I'm like Cooper relax okay, I'm just gonna watch one more episode of Heroes and then I'm gonna feed you and we can go to the park and run in slow motion okay just one more episode and then Siler kills the girl that I've had a crush on for like half the season and the episode suddenly ends and I'll be like no one more episode and then 15 hours later I'm still watching the stupid show and then my dog is laying next to the front door dead in a pool of his own pee pee. If we had a lunch date at 3 and I don't show up until 3.45, don't blame me. Blame lost. Like if you text me and I don't text you back, psh, walking dead marathon in black and white. I fail a test at school or I show up late for work. Yo, it was the My Little Pony mid-season finale last night, son. Don't even try to act like you didn't watch it, okay? Brony, stand up. You know what though? It's much safer to invest your time into YouTube than it is for TV. I'm gonna tell you why. Because if you drop from 14 million views one week to 7 million views the next week, guess what? YouTube ain't gonna be like, yo, your channel sucks. And you wanna know why they don't do that? Because it's not fair. I think the reason why these networks are so quick to cancel shows without giving us any closure is because they know there's not a whole lot of consequences. You ever heard the phrase, back by popular harassment? We should probably take that to the next level. Because if these network heads cancel shows, then when they're in Santa Monica walking on the street, all of a sudden, <laughs> or when they're out at a restaurant with their family and the servers start leaving little notes on the bottom of their bill. I'm not saying don't cancel shows, just if you're gonna cancel a show, give us three or four episodes of closure. Don't just pull the plug. Four million viewers might be bad rating for television and not seem like a lot of people, until one of them steals your Mercedes. So network heads, next time you're in a meeting discussing what shows you're gonna pull a plug on and try to replace with new shows without giving us any closure, just remember, nowadays, people take their entertainment very seriously. 